Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa as we're ready to digest the biggest entertainment stories. My name is Elsie Godwin and I have Ife Oluwa Shunke here, the troublemaker, and Ife Omai, the beautiful lady. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Own it. Oh. Thank you. Mm. So that's all you can give me, the troublemaker. <laughs> but you owned it now. <laughs> no, I was telling her to own it. Oh, you were drumming for her. Oh. You were not no, listening I, to it. It just came back. So <laughs> you call me a troublemaker, like, really? Mm. Are you going to give me something better or can I leave this? Hey, <laughs> walk, out. walk out. And drop smart. You know that you have hey. Aries ladies on this table. You want to threaten us. Like. Wow, really? <laughs> I'll just keep working. Okay, so before we get into conversations, we have a guest um, joining us via Skype from London. He's an artist and most importantly, at this time, a survivor of COVID-19. So, hi, Juma B. Hello. Yeah, I can hear you loud and clear. How are you doing? Fine, thank you. How are you? God has been faithful or correct. It definitely. So I we would love to hear your story. How how was it battling this um, deadly virus now? Um, um, I really don't like talking about it um, so much anymore because um, it was a terrible experience. But we thank God for giving me a second um, chance. It was uh, it started like malaria. I thought because I treated malaria before I left um, Nigeria. So um, the, the usual fever, um, headache, and all that. Then on the third day, uh, it was really serious when I couldn't breathe anymore. So um, we had to put a call through the 111. It took a while for them to come. And then when they eventually came, um, they apologized for coming late and said, according to them here in the UK, they received like 16,000 calls in a day. Wow. So I think it was actually worse here in the developed um, countries. But And it, it took me like 15 days um, to finally conquer it. So, different stages, different phases um, at the interval of my experience. Um, the first stage was when I was trying to stabilize my breath. The second stage was when I thought I wouldn't survive it because of the pain, which was constant, um, the headache, the fever was something else where you have to be on the bed and um, for as long as 24 hours, you may be able to move because you don't know if you have to sit, stand or, or lie. You know, everything gets awkward for you, you know, and um, on the tenth day, though no matter how severe it is, they will always tell you here because there's no cure yet. They will tell you uh, at every four hour interval, please use paracetamol and drink a lot of water, possibly eight cups in a day. You know, so I did that for like nine straight days, and there was no result. It was still same. Uh, and um, then an uncle of mine who caught it here in, in, in London too um, and survived put a call through and told me that I should get vapor up. Um, for steaming purpose, uh, then I should get the lemon, ginger, lime, and honey, you know. So I was drinking that every morning and night. So you, uh, you you were home all through the process. You didn't have to go to any isolation center for anything? No, the thing is, I um, actually went to a hospital. But after three days, the ambulance brought me back home because, you know, they will tell you, even um, the, the uh, what's it called, the practitioners themselves will tell you, um, is advisable to isolate from home, you know. But mine, the reason why I had to go to the hospital was to stabilize my breath, you know, because the, the pressure of the population, there are no spaces, there are no bad spaces. And when you get there, let's assume you were about conquering yours or you have the high immune system to fight um, the virus, and you get to the hospital and the person next to you is like um, an elderly person and eventually gives up, the person on your left gives up, gives up as well. You, the fear will conquer your immunity and you finally give up as well. So that's why they say, what are you even going to the hospital for when there's no cure? Mm. That's basically it. So okay. there's really no reason to go to the hospital unless your breath, um, your, your lungs get blocked and it needs um, urgent attention. So oxygen will be used to stabilize your breath, you know. That's basically what you go to the hospital for. Not like they're giving drugs. Even the paracetamol, you still be the one to buy it yourself. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, just really quickly, you mentioned that you had malaria, well, you thought you had malaria from Nigeria. So I'm guessing that you contracted it from... Nigeria, can you give us an idea of where you think you actually came in contact with this virus? I didn't contact the virus from Nigeria. It was malaria I had in Nigeria and I treated it. I was fine before I left Nigeria. So I thought it was the switch of environment um, that made you be a call. That was what I thought. Um, but when I, when I knew it was COVID, that was when, it, when I couldn't breathe anymore. That was when I knew it was COVID because that's the final stage of uh, so there are different symptoms of different people. For me, that was like the final stage. So that that that, that, that like uh, 
that was when I knew it was like very, very serious. But here, you know, even while we still look up to the UK, you can still go to the boat and stop buying food, buy, buy food items and stuff. Now, in my apartment, um, in the, it's like the tallest apartment in Ilford, where there are like hundreds of people, when you're going into your house, you need to go hard to go into the vehicle. So, what happens when you're not the only one is that there's an airborne disease according to scientists, you know? So, in an right. elevator of uh, seven people, when you're going to your own apartment, what happens? Actually, mm -hmm. still where you lean on with your hands, you know, not like I don't wash my hands for good. I travel, yeah, you know, but I mean, as a matter of fact, I still have the last one, you know. So I've been using it, I was adhering strictly to those sort of uh, guidelines, and you know, but it is well. If you're buying a but if you're taking a basket, you don't know what to you're paying with your card, all of that. So we don't have to can be contacted. We just pray for threats and God's guidance. So as to survive eventually virus. All right, like, good. Um, I do my So, um, what would be your word to the people that still don't believe in coronavirus? Because we still have celebrities in Nigeria, such as Latan, who doesn't believe in um, coronavirus. What would be your word to them? No, it's a, it's a problem. Um, it's not just corona. Nigerians don't believe anything unless it happens to them or their immediate family. It's more than the a cause than and than a blessing for us, because. Ignorance kills faster than death itself, you know. You won't believe even after I had it, a lot of people were still saying I didn't have it, you know. And, and in Nigeria, as we speak, I, we have been, I've been on the program for over two weeks on Instagram, um, trying to enlighten people, but they did palliatives, they sent some items to my place and all, and just to make people understand that, you know what, I didn't see it, I didn't hear it, I actually experienced it. Don't get a second chance. But this is very real. It's not something to tell you. did that. And um, um, for those people who don't actually believe, I pray it doesn't get to happen to them eventually or their family. Because now you can see how crowded they Lagos is. I've been seeing videos all day with mm -hmm. people trying to get them and stuff. So I'm praying to God Almighty, this doesn't exceed this limit. Because if it does, we're in trouble. Where are the facilities? Who will help us? Who's going to rescue us? How do we attend to ourselves? Even when it, it, the population of uh, the, the contacted ones is at 20% for last week in Nigeria, people are still dying. You can imagine what's happening in the north. So I'm, I'm really scared for all. So let it not be like they've linked the, the world to Corona. Who's going to fight for us? Let's see in developed countries, they can't even cover it. As of yesterday, they still recorded 702 deaths in the UK. You're on the internet, mm. Google it. So this is so confusing. This is a serious situation. People are dying, and you are saying, unless you see videos, unless you see people. I have, I have a friend in Lagos who's been on isolation for 27 days. She caught it from Dubai. According to her, when she got to Lagos, she actually isolated herself. Then I had, a, I, had, I had to put a call through for people to see on my Instagram. She was live on, on, her, on her bed in Yaba Isolation Center. They saw the place. And people were like, are you serious? And she told me she's been down as that. When I called her that day, it was like 17 days, like 10 days ago. Today is 27 days. She's still... All right. Now, I made a call. This is the time. She's still positive. I, I, I so feel how... I feel I, the I passion think, yeah. on this one, and I hope people are listening. But let's touch quickly on your music before we let you go. What Are you working on anything new at the moment? And how would this experience yeah. affect your style of music going forward? Yeah, um, basically, um, shout out to SDB Entertainment. This is actually my record label, and uh, we've been doing a lot. We are never carried away or distracted by pandemics or, you know, because we always be fighters. And um, for, for me, uh, as an individual, uh, I'm super passionate and that suits my focus. So the album that works with you, um, but 90% ready as we speak, and we have like one international connection on the album. And here in the UK as well, I featured like three top artists. So the aim was for the album to drop towards November, not for this demonic uh, virus that's been spreading. But let God, let's watch what God has to for us. Then we have like three new videos as well. I just dropped a Put a Ring, which is stopping chats everywhere, featuring Nice. Um, we dropped like a week ago, and it's really trending and doing fine on YouTube. So shout out to Nigerians and Jumbo for their support. There's a lot, there's a lot for doing, no product in this business. Mm. Congratulations on beating the demonic COVID, and I wish you luck in um, your endeavors. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us, Jumabi. All right, let's go on a very quick break. But when we come back, we definitely have more stories for you. Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still end up as a useless child. I deceive them every day. <laughs> <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm -hmm. and where I am now, wow. and that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like an Alibaba? Alibaba. Now? <laughs> <laughs> Plus TV Africa, we're feeling good. No time to do Everybody feeling alright. I'm 
make music and people are still by. That was how they look myself, minimal are you? Mm. Apala music is for mature minded people. I got DM sometimes from Malawi, like, what? Sleeping early. Sleeping early. Welcome back. This is still Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. Video director Clarence Peter says he has not been arrested or charged over the death of dancer Dick Chokodak. Um, he tells his own side of the story. He said he and the witnesses willingly made themselves available for questioning when they were invited by the police. So um, he went on to tell us how they rushed, the chance, yeah. Yeah, they rushed um, her to the hospital, one, two, and they rejected her, yeah. thinking it was COVID-19, until they got to the third one. And after 30 minutes of trying to still negotiate with those ones to get her in, that was when she was pronounced dead. And I think this, this new side of the story actually brought some level of um, fear and worry for me, because... I mean, we've had this conversation on this table where we said that um, people who are not suffering from COVID-19 are suffering, are suffering right, right now because um, nobody's ready to help. So mm. there is a problem. I remember Omotola's brother, a big brother-in-law, no, yeah. cousin or something. That was in the UK. But that yes. was in the UK. Yeah, yeah. same thing. I, th mm -hmm. I don't think it's a country thing. problem. Yeah. I think doctors are just really overwhelmed. overwhelmed. Especially for the people that are not equipped for COVID-19 where they're always suspecting that that could be it. Like but people. I'm just wondering, you saw, sh you know, smoke come out of the shades. Why is the shades? <laughs> Why on earth would you think that that's COVID-19? Maybe I it's a new symptom. Oh. Well, you already said it. People that are not equipped to handle COVID-19. It's really, you know, really, it's really coupled with fear. Yeah. I mean, there's a problem. It's really sad because um, I know during the Ebola outbreak, after we um, managed to curb it, curb it um, the malaria increased the deaths and malaria um death rate of malaria people um patients increased right so the fear is how is this going to trigger even if we beat this disease now how is it going to trigger other sicknesses are we making provisions for that so because right now like if high blood pressure like i like like for, you know mm. so if you're running away from sicknesses people are telling you straight up that this is not covid 19 this is this you're not making any arrangement for those type of people, which is why when we're talking about it the last time, I said, is it that we have separate units now? Are there some people that are just solely to COVID-19? Or are we, are we putting all our healthcare workers to focus on COVID? We know it is the primary focus right now, but we need to think about the secondary people, people who need help as well. Now, we heard what Jumabi just said, like they would advise you not to go to an hospital. And obviously, I'm sure that's the same thing out here, because if you go to an hospital, the, the risk of getting the virus virus is even higher than staying in your house. So um, it's really sad that we have to be battling a virus at the same time, having to battle explaining to healthcare workers that look, this is exactly what, what is wrong I'm with really, me. I'm what really they sorry know. for her family, to be I honest. Um, it, like, it sounds so easy to just talk and even for him, like, I know he had to do it because the message was going around that he was um, arrested. arrested and trying mm. to clear his name, but I don't want to get carried away <clears throat> on other things and forgetting that somebody has just died for like whatever reason negligence fear whatever and i think that's really sad like for someone that's so young had mm. so much potential trying to make a name for herself i think about how the family mm. would um feel about that i feel like sometimes we're, we're, we're forgetting a lot of that about, a lot about the sentiments and that's why i was kind of glad that he put at least he put a paragraph into that that he talked about her personality talked about all of that type of stuff until i read um, um what's that girl from big brother africa Buki, Buku, whatever her name is. Uh, she's a comedian, sort of. Anyway. From Big Brother. Africa. Yes, she has a big personality. She was in Sugar Rush. Please remind um, me. Bisola. Name. Bisola. Bisola is Big Brother Bu Nigeria. Yes, sorry. Okay. Until, Bis <laughs> until Bisola's post and saying that she had worked with her once, but she remembered her spirit. That was like the first time I heard, I I heard about Kodak in that light, like as a human being. Not about why she was dying, if somebody killed her. None, of, none about that, that, that type of stuff. So it's really, I feel like for me, it's something I have to remember that when I'm, when I'm, when I'm speaking on issue remember the human side of it you know mm -hmm. We are so rest in peace. Yeah, so rest in peace. <clears throat> and um, now that he has come out to clear the I mean, we may declare this morning as well that there isn't any 
anything to say you're holding him mm. accountable now until you Accidents don't it. happen you know and it, this is not to say we don't feel the pain of the family i saw a video of the mom over the weekend i mean we need to touch on that as well where she was saying people now put account number online claiming it is hers yeah. and they're getting money from people um based on the fact Imagine that they're helping that. so that is another level of law and i don't understand you're ripping off a dead person I, I don't know i don't know but that's the situation right now so she had to come out with her younger sister to make a video to say the account number isn't hers and that people should stop sending uh, money into the said account number so um this is a sad one and of course i know it is also sad for clarence himself because mm. it's someone that has, has, has worked closely um with you over the years and it's, it's never easy but I pray that God gives everyone involved the, um, how did they put, put the grammar now? The mm. fortitude something to be The to strength us. to yes. carry on. Yes. Mm. We just disgraced us. <laughs> 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 but it's okay. <laughs> Moving on. Nigerian artists always pass through Ghana to um, blow. And this is coming from Stone Boy. If only wash, okay. <laughs> like, Speak about And then I people. was waiting for him. I was thinking, okay, you like, look at David Doom. Look at whiskey. Uh, besides you. Look at Bonner Boy. <laughs> Look at. I thought he was going to give us a whole lot of names. And I said, for instance, Mr. Easy. I was like, duh, we all knew that. <laughs> like, bro, try harder. So what are you talking about? So you just, I just think this is just something. Banta. Yeah, he just wanted to just say. But Dotto was on that life, smiling and nodding. Dotto and was smiling like, kill on so, man. Oh, okay. The was only that person the... that I can also put in that light is Pato Rankin. But Pato Rankin worked as a laborer. It was, um, he did menial jobs and stuff like that in Ghana. He did not blow from Ghana mm. musically. The only person who blew musically from Ghana is Mr. Easy that I know of and unless you know anyone him, else. To be honest, like if they're gonna come <laughs> Like they can have, have him. him. Oh that my is God. so savage. Nah, you got me because I'm not really. Wow, mm. I'm crazy. And it's ridiculous for him to say. Come that. on, he just give us nobody, nobody, Kisha, nobody, nice. nobody, nobody. Still, nobody. you can have him. Ah. Honestly, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> it's, it's uh, very interesting that he's saying that. I think he actually believes what he's saying mm -hmm. in his mind because people are really trying to reach for some type of like. Um, grip on success in the way that Nigeria, Nigerians like to boast about. I'm really glad that I'm Nigerian. Sometimes I feel like in this 20, this late years, like last five, ten years, it's a flex to be Nigerian, mm. especially globally. Like people just rate and that. Um, hmm? No, go on. Go and on. and I, I think he's trying to like get his own. Also having of someone like a Bacha giving us money yearly. <laughs> And guess, I mean, what? I'm just so and guess what? And guess what? <laughs> this is the problem with the Ghanaian entertainment industry. Always looking for who to point the finger at, always looking for who to blame, always looking for who to compare yourself with. That's why they are not really growing. I saw Let's a post. The tables. Who, which Ghanaian artists have we helped to blow? He also said it that Sakodio. nobody. I think so too. Nobody. I said no. I think you. I said I think you also said it, but um, that no. You, you, was do you understand big. that once you no, no, that once you cross yeah. into yeah. Nigerian yeah. market, look yeah. at this Ugandan yeah. guy. Did you did you did you follow the fight over the weekend? Uganda versus Nigeria, oh, yeah. and then the story, the, the song. What's that song? The very popular, party but after. is it? But the party top, after party, party, party. party, and you're like, if if that song did not cross over to Nigeria, like, it wouldn't have. I mean, it's it's just that song blew more than the artist. I don't even know. Yeah, I can't recognize fact, the guy. Over the weekend, I realized that. Yeah, no, I know his Uganda, name. I know his know? name, but I can't recognize him if I see Even him. Even RTVs to me, until that slow wine song, I don't oh, think they Until were the okay. collaboration with you know Wendy Don't let us put ourselves on their level. Now we're trying to come down to their level. Okay, so we're so all just, one big family, yeah, one no, big no, brother. We don't have sisters. to do that. Let's we're just Africans. Leave it. And I think that's their problem. I saw a post over the weekend um, about a Ghanaian who reacted to the David Doe and Nicki Minaj. And the person was like, Charlie, David Doe don't blow. Like ah, this Nigerian artist, like it was, it came as a shock. Mm. And then this Ghanaian promoter, or I don't know. Someone who said that. when um, Shatawale um, was featured on, on the whole track with Beyonce, that Ghanaians were not happy for him. They did not celebrate it. But I look at how um, Nigerians are celebrating the video and Nicki Minaj that they are the cause of the problems. I don't know why they constantly think that comparing themselves with Nigeria is the way to go. It's just like when friends start comparing themselves with each other i think they should look for more um healthy collaborations do you understand like get into each other and reach out to a david reach out to whiskey brother, reach out to and this is the big brother house come to nigeria let us help you okay that's how we wrap up right okay <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you for watching and do send in your opinions via WhatsApp to 0906005719 or Twitter to us at Plus TV Africa. Remember, you can catch up on this episode and all exclusive content by subscribing to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. My thank you as always you go to my co anchors, Ife Omai and Ife Olu Oshonkeye, and the entire production team. Thank you for watching Plus TV Africa's Tea Time. My name is Elsie Godwin. Do stay safe.